Welcome back. I've got a review. It's Friday. I haven't done a Franco or a Fastbender review in some time, so I thought, well, I believe there's some new Franco coming out soon. I pretty much covered all the Franco films in my collection, but I haven't covered all the Fastbender films. Uh, now, that may not be of interest to some people on the, that follow my channel because it's not horror, but I'd still consider Rain or Fastbender my personal favorite director of all time. Uh, so I'm going to save Fridays for Franco and for Fastbender. But today we're going to do Fastbender. And we're going to focus on, I think, the greatest film he ever did. And probably one of the greatest films, period. And that is Berlin Alexanderplatz. Now this is the Criterion DVD I bought many moons ago, like in 2007. You can pick up the Blu-ray of this from uh, Criterion for 60 bucks, or Second Sight in the UK has a limited edition as well, which that looks like a, a way to go because it's got a feature-length documentary on Fastbender and on the making of the film. Uh, Berlin Alexanderplatz, it, it is a monumental effort, uh, an existential masterpiece it's based on a book by Alfred Doblin, and it's it's essentially a story of Franz Biberkopf, who in the 1920s in Germany was sentenced to prison for killing his girlfriend, and he's released from prison, and he comes back to a Germany that's entirely not what he remembers it to be. He's a simple guy. He's a guy that's well, initially, I guess, when he made, when he killed his girlfriend, he was really a pimp, trying to figure out how to make it. But now he's come back, he's been released from prison, thrown to the wolves, if you will, and he's trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to make it. But it's, it's, a, it's more than just that. It, it's a film, it's a story, but the story is not the point. The, the point of this film is, to get into the minutia of everyday life, their ups, their downs, uh, their failures, their successes, and, and and Fassbender uncovers every single rock in this Franz Biberkopf's life and puts it on celluloid, and it's just a masterpiece of filmmaking. It's it's it was shot in seventy nine and I think it was released in Western Germany in 1980. It's 15 and a half hours long. So be prepared to watch it over multiple viewings, uh, multiple days. I, I watched it over basically a week, but I've seen it before. It's an immersive experience. Uh, I would say it's analogous to, you know, binge watching a TV series or a Netflix series at this point. Uh, but this is something different. This is this is entirely something different, uh, because this is a this is a story that focuses on presentation of the human condition. It's not just a story of characters and their actions and their motivations. And although those things happened in this film, you know, Franz Biberkopf uh, meets and falls in love and, and has all kinds of crises throughout this this film ups and downs, but it, it's really about the deconstruction of a, one man's attempt to find himself, his life story, the meaning of life, and what it means to live beyond just the need of food, shelter. You know, what's this life about beyond just, you know, the, the obvious comfort needs and those type of things. And so that's, and what is Franz, what is, in this case, what is Franz Biberkopf's role in life? Is it to, um, you know, and he struggles with that. He, he comes out of prison wanting to be a better person, wanting to leave behind uh, basically a criminal kind of existence that he had prior to going to jail. But, but, but let's face it, he's thrown into and thrust into a society and a city that just, chews you up and spits you out. You know, Germany in the Weimar period 
after World One and pre Hitler was really in a Great Depression, predominantly due to what happened with World War One, uh, and so just the average person, no matter how what their moral compass was, it was difficult to make a living. And and we see that of Franz Biberkoff and his friends, including his close friend Reinhold. So he tries to go straight, but through a series of events, you know, based on what characters do to him and their own evil evil convictions and their own foul fail, failables and their own errors and their own moral lack of a moral compass the impact on him over time he's just a he's just crushed you know he's uh and he ultimately goes back to what society kind of tagged him as when they put him in jail to begin with so it, it it's it's a it's a it's a fascinating character study but it's really an existential masterpiece. It's there's moments of boredom and tedium that's that's commonplace with our lives. It's all captured on film. Uh, it's an unexpirated look at the story of Franz Biberkoff based on the novel Alfred Dublin's novel, which is really probably one of the top 100 novels of all time as well. But I mean, it's 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 as faithful an adaptation as you can possibly get of that book uh, over 15 hours. Now there is an epilogue that, f that basically takes Franz Biberkoff a little bit beyond the book into the Rainer Fassbender world, which is going more into what it means for Fassbender. This book meant a lot to Fassbender. It was kind of a critical compass in his life. Uh, and, and so he kind of illustrates that through Franz Biberkoff in the epilogue episode at the end, which is a really kind of a bizarre kind of a uh, nightmarish visionary world, if you want to, I don't know how else to describe it, that basically Franz Biberkoff has sunk into the, the, the abyss. You know, he's just, he's hit, he's hit rock bottom, physically and emotionally, uh, through... And, and a lot of it has to do with him discovering some things about himself that he didn't realize. Uh, and it's it's a journey. It's a human journey. And, and so Rainer Fassbender's slant on the book and the story is uh, illustrated quite convincingly in, in the epilogue, which is which is fascinating. It's a it's a it's an unbelievable film. Also on this disc is the uh, by discs plural. I mean it's it's six discs plus a bonus disc features. And there's actually the 19, early 1930s version of Berlin Alexander Platz, which was 90 minutes. That film was uh, on here as well, which is an entirely different kind of take on the whole experience. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a masterpiece you know, it was it's it was interesting when it when it came out. It was pillared. A lot of it had to do with um, well, the subject matter obviously offended people in the eighties, uh, but also it was accused of being technically poorly done and, and poorly shot, uh, which is not true. I mean, Xavier Schwarzenberger, uh, Rainer Fassbender, or, or the cameraman and the director were fantastic technicians, some of the best. I mean, you, I've seen all their movies and it, they're unparalleled. But the film was dark. And so and it was shot on 16 millimeter, which I think at the time people were thinking, in fact, Xavier mentioned this in an, an interview in the extra features that, you know, nobody expected something like this, which was a, which was a very personal film for Fassbender to ever see the light of day 20, 30 years later. So they, no one was thinking about the ramifications of shooting this on anything other than 16 millimeter. So, uh, you know, they, they just didn't see, have the foresight to think that someone 20 years from now is going to want to see this. Uh, thankfully, Julian Lorenz uh, restored the film 
they blew it up 35 millimeter, scanned it, and did all the improvement on the picture and image quality. And so we have that's what we have today with that with the Blu-ray, the DVD of Criterion, or the Second Sight Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, totally different, totally different um, thing than I usually talk about on here, which is almost always horror. There's a lot of horror in this. I mean, it's 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 the human condition horror, which is even more frightening than. Frankenstein or Wolfman or the creature from Black Lagoon because it, it affects us and hits us where it hurts because it's what we've experienced and it's closest to our moral compass and our life experiences than you know Frankenstein's monster so in its own way it, it is a horror story uh, but it's an unbelievable piece of filmmaking and uh, I recommend anybody to to give it a shot you know, set aside more than one day and, and, and without distractions because this is, a, this is the de definition of a slow burn. All the little moments that happen in our lives or in this film that are captured are important in summation. And so you've got to, you, you, by, not have, by having a casual observance of this film, you're going to miss it you're going to miss the big points because the, the the point of the film is about the minuscule things it's about the little people their ups and downs and their success failure and ultimately how they get ground down either by society or by people around them or what have you so yeah interesting film a masterpiece uh, you know if i had to if i had to say what's the greatest film of all time I would if you just ask me knee jerk to say that I would probably say Berlin Alexander Platz it, it just it's the first to come to mind before Citizen Kane before a number of films uh, but for me personally that's this, this this is a tour de force of filmmaking and I highly recommend you give it a shot so that's going to do it for Fast Bender Fridays uh, I will be back with some other updates and things and, and definitely more some more Franco. I just haven't got any anything new in yet to talk about. So appreciate you watching. Let me know if you've seen Berlin Alexander Platz and what your thoughts are about the film. Thanks.